nice to see you. Hi, uh, my name is Brittany. Um, you guys look cool. This is what I look like. Uh, I am a, um, I'm a black and Japanese female, so this is how I look up close, right? And then, like, from a distance, you know, it, sometimes it sort of appears like, teenage Ethiopian boy, got lost in urban outfitters for a long time. Build a sleep fort out of crop tops. Uh, my friend who runs a variety show in the area, she asked me if I could do drag Barack Obama. <laughs> it struck me, I already look like if for Halloween, Obama was 11 from Stranger Things. <laughs> like that's just what I've got going on, you know. I don't know, I think, like, I'm pretty girly, but I feel like I can get down with my masculine side, and I would describe my masculinity as that of an 18th century French nobleman. <laughs> Just hear me out. Okay, w imagine like a wig, okay, and some powder, you know, and rouge. Right, and britches, and hose on the heels and the nails on the back, so just really classically masculine. <laughs> and I just wrote, I wrote that because men tell me to write my jokes more relatably, so I thought I would lean in. <laughs> or strap on, whatever the verbs are, you know. Um, hey, I think we live in kind of a tense political climate. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good year for marches in Washington, D.C., right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, like, you know, I want to go to a march, and I want to start my own spontaneous chant. I really want to shake things up, you know, like, like, Ben Carson is my dad. <laughs> He's what? He's my dad. And then just see who can relate. And, like... <laughs> And uh, my actual dad's a lot cooler. Uh, he and my mom, they've been vegetarian my entire life. I grew up in a vegetarian household. I eat meat now, but I feel like when I talk about eating meat, I just sound like an alien trying to blend into human society. You know, I'm like, yes, I also partake in pleasures of flesh. <laughs> I like iron like that which pulses through my real human veins. <laughs> I'll order that steak, well done, thank you. <laughs> and in college, I, um, I hooked up with the president of the vegetarian club, so I just sort of feel forever attracted to dreadlocks on white guys <laughs> because of it. <laughs> or he gave me great head, he needed the protein, so. Um, <laughs> I love dreadlocks, black and original, right? Like, I also, I also kind of like them yellow gold uh, as the cornfields of Iowa. <laughs> like, oh, Rastafari Rapunzel, let down your locks so I can chew on them. And if the appropriation police wants to lock me up and throw me in woke jail, then so be it, okay? I just like the way patchouli smells on privilege. <laughs> I don't know, dating's pretty tough in, in DC, but if one like bizarre reality of my experience with it is that I've actually been with um, three guys from the University of Maryland Physics Department. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and I, I've never like been to the University of Maryland. I've never studied physics. I'm just not that attracted to social skills, apparently. <laughs> So I happened to meet a fourth one by sheer coincidence um, off of OK Cupid. I'm serious, he mentioned to me over a conversation that he had to take physics classes for work, and then I was like, oh, where? And he said, the University of Maryland. And I thought, ah, <laughs> what a curious phenomenon. Could it be that the University of Maryland Physics Department is conducting an experiment on the probability of fucking me? <laughs> uh, or they're attracted to medium social skills. <laughs> I know what I offer. Um, I don't know, I, uh, things are going fine in, in that department. I've been writing some science fiction erotica, so um, the two lovers in my tale are 17th century astronomist Isaac Newton and the concept of gravity. So Newton inhaled sharply as his bridges fell to the ground.
<laughs> thanks to the eager force of gravity. <laughs> this exposed Newton's ready erection, which he brandished, as he said to his lover, do you see how it defies you? <laughs> Yeah, I, like, I'd add more, but there's only so much direction the plot will go. <laughs> I don't know. I um, so grew up. I grew up mostly in um, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, people make assumptions based on that, but personally, I don't know why Japan has to be the reason that I love household objects with little faces. You know, that's a stereotype, right? Like, but for me, growing, being a kid in Japan does mean that I know the correct pronunciation of the wor uh, the porn bukkake. Okay, if you don't know what that is, just Google it later, this joke will make more sense. So like, like I'm not gonna impo like, impose the correct pronunciation of that, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna say, stop the tape, it's bukkake, <laughs> it's the short vowel, right? So I have to assimilate, and my mom insists on fr pronouncing futon, like futon, if you go to Ikea, or something, she'll be like, excuse me, where do you carry the futon? And they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, mom, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> they're not over it. <laughs> Just use futon, you know? And like, s speaking of harbors, Bukake in Japanese actually just means splash. So Japan has state-of-the-art water parks. Linguistically speaking, that means Bukake world could refer to either form of high-velocity group fun. <laughs> I, um, my mom's father, she was in Japan for World War II where she married a Japanese woman, my, my grandmother. And uh, this makes me feel like I'm just the product of way too many Japanese women that were really into black culture. You know, like what happened? Like what was going on? Like what if uh, in the mid 19th century, my great, great, great something, she was just out working a rice field and broke out into a perfectly memorized Negro spiritual? You know, like, um, like, Suing good Suito Chari Oto Coming for to take me home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I hope to find on Ancestry.com. <laughs> I, I love history. I love history a lot. I, I have a master's in it, which is why I, I'm here. Because um, <laughs> well, when you're in the humanities, you want a really stable backup like comedy. You know? And uh, like, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite songs uh, as an artifact of American culture. So if you know it, please feel free to join in. OK, are you ready? Uh, let me hear you just wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble, baby, yeah. Wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble. We have like five black people here. Wobble, baby, yeah, get in there. Yeah, yeah, get in there, in the back. Yeah, yeah, hey, big girl, make him back it up. Hey, nice, make him back it up. Over here, hey, big girl, make him back it up. Make him back it up. Nice, so the Civil Rights Movement um, <laughs> over saw white Americans embrace black music as American culture, and this was so important, right? I went to a wedding where I, I saw a lot of old white people dancing to Wobble. <laughs> and I just thought like, oh wow, <laughs> progress has gone too far. <laughs> Martin said he had a dream, not a mild nightmare. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah, that's enough of me. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your show. Give it up for me. Ready for your next feature act of the evening? Yeah. All right, this guy's absolutely hilarious. You've seen him on Comedy Central and Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. Please welcome Lafayette Wright. <laughs> <laughs>